as you saw, I swapped my 1965 Series 2A Land Rover for this 1981 UAS 452. I'm just going to give you like a little walk around of it. Uh, this video will just be purely showing off what it is because I think it's going to feature more in some videos. So UAS is a Russian manufacturer. This particular one is from the Czech Republic. It was imported in 2019. Uh, the bloke who bought it uh, imported it, got it registered over here, and didn't actually do anything with it. So it's it's not been used a whole lot in the UK. When it was still out in the Czech Republic, this was a survey vehicle of some sort. So apparently that's what the little roof hatch is about, some sort of like survey periscope type thing that used to poke out of that. Uh, and previous to that, it was a military ambulance. Um, so if I show you what they used to look like with the dark green, a, a slightly cooler colour than it is now. Um, but the colour it is, is growing on me. Uh, it used to be blue when... Uh, it was imported over here, a horrible blue. I'll, I'll show you some of the bits which haven't been covered by the paint. So it's infinitely better than the, that blue colour. So it's a two and a half litre, four cylinder petrol. They're 70 horsepower when new. And uh, it's geared very similar to a Land Rover. Uh, it's got like 4.7 ratio diffs. Um, what straight one to one top gear. Uh, they're supposed to be good for about 100 kilometers an hour which is about 60 mile an hour which is which is fine that's that's all i really want out of it you know not all vans should be terrifyingly fast so the engine sits up front in between the two seats and the interior is pretty sparse but also quite well equipped amps oil pressure temperature fuel gauge speedo and this is a switch for the fuel pump. Somebody's added an electric fuel pump to it. It's even got hazards. My, uh, most of my stuff hasn't got them. I only learnt the other day that to get them to go... Huh? They wouldn't work without the indicators being on the other day, but now they... Now they work. Ah, the magic of old cars. So let me jump inside. So inside we have, well, uh, that's for the Bluetooth and that is for the USB. Uh, no, uh, it's got a heater up front, which is nice. It's got a bloody ashtray for your cigars. It's got some pretty cool Russian signs and that is for I can't remember which is which, but one is high, neutral and low range and the other is two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. I've not even tried them out yet. And one thing I noticed the other day looking at this, I don't know if you can see this. So we've got one, two, three, four, and then we've got three X. Three times faster in reverse. Well, is it even reverse? Who knows? Yes, it is. I've managed to get it to go backwards. It's also got some additional stuff like this here. This would be something to do with the ambulance side of it originally. This sort of stuff doesn't appear to work and I have found quite a few cut wires. There is a spare pulley on the engine which isn't being used and it looks like that. Well, I reckon this would have had some sort of 20 volt, volt alternator sat off to the side powering all the ambulance uh, side of stuff. And it's no longer needed so it's been ripped off and the wiring has all been cut. So it's got a lot of like convoy lights and stuff which do not work, which is a shame, but uh, I don't really need them. Above the driver's seat, you have gun stowage, which is very useful. Uh, some sort of hatch, which doesn't seem to work. Uh, a interior light, which is nice because the Land Rover did not have any interior lights. <laughs> that way, interior light. And the other way, watch this. As I've only got the mental age of a 12 year old, I've always wanted a controllable spotlight in a vehicle, and now I've got one. Things which make you realise how simple this uh, vehicle is. That is the only thing holding the seats in. So if I... 
you can just take it out. And uh, yeah, no seat belts, which I think is a bit strange for a 1981 vehicle. I'll be adding them in. Uh, not that, not that I think it will achieve much in a in a bit of a crash, but it is uh, bumpy roads. You don't want to get thrown out of your seat, do you? And things like this are pretty military looking to my eyes anyway. This is uh, an isolator. It's connected to the ear for the vehicle. Great, I'm gonna have to retune my radio now. Jokes, how's it going? And it's got aircon. Then over on the passenger side, it has behind the seat a heater for the cab in the back, which is cool. Uh, it also has uh, like leather blinds. I've yet to pull them down. There's probably horrible things living inside them, which I don't want to see. Uh, yeah, and uh, this partition window, which is pretty good. That was one thing I liked about the Land Rover, that it was a pickup and the uh, garbage you put in the back it was separate to the front where you sit. So this thing on the top, uh, from what I've seen, the ambulances didn't come with these and I've seen another UAS 452 with one of them on the top. So I'd imagine it was when they were fitted out to be survey vehicles. I'd look into it, I'll find out what it is. Um, I've not been kicked out the house, but... A mate came down and visited on the weekend and down here till late at night messing around making stuff. So we had a few beers on the farm here with the farmer and I stayed in this van and he stayed in the other one. I do have a house you know and my wife still loves me I think so you know. But if it does all go wrong I've got two terrible vans to sleep in so. So in the back there are bracketry of some sort for holding stretchers. I think they were, had like six stretchers in them, or was it three? Three each side, or maybe six in total? I'm not too sure, but uh, they're all gone, and I've got no uh, interest in buying ones. I, I'm I'm not into the whole pretend, pretend to be in the military thing. Um, you know, it's a, yeah, it's a military vehicle, but I'm not going to start dressing up in different uniforms. And the same as the front, it's gone. Decent thick uh, blinds everywhere. Then up the front we've also got these. I should get these Google translated. Absolutely no idea what that says. This is the VIN and it says UAS 452T. That's the model that this is. Uh, again, no idea. UAS 452T. Uh, some sort of thermometer. And then some bracketry for holding, who knows, ox oxygen maybe. This is a cool thing. So I don't want to keep beating on Land Rovers because I actually bloody love them. But uh, that hatch, right? If that was in a Land Rover, there'd be it'd just be a nut and bolt, and there'd be no hinge, there'd be no bushes or anything. It'd be pretty primitive. But on this, the hatch is cool. Check it out. So you've got this, which is. Unlocks it, and then there's this. On the back is what it's got what looks like a NATO hitch but on a Russian vehicle but it does look smaller than a NATO hitch so yeah copied maybe who knows uh, it's also got steps cool thing about the back is the doors open all the way and then on the top convoy light convoy lights like I say not connected Oh, and as for this stupid little thing, uh, Jago found it in one of the laybys we broke down in the other day. And uh, to be honest, it looks a bit like me, doesn't it? And now with that look, that kind of looks like blood. Oh, Christ. 
So here's the power plant, two and a half litre, all alloy, uh, head and block, 70 horsepower beast. Don't get too excited about what I've pixelated here. That's coming next episode. It is not a turbo or supercharger. Don't get your hopes up. On the front of the radiator, it comes with these. Effectively, a radiator blind for the cold Russian winters. Another thing you may know is there is a fuel filler this side and this side. So there's a small 20 litre tank this side and there's a 50 litre tank the other side and then there's a changeover valve in between the engine, in, in front of the engine so you can choose which tank to run it off. Which is pretty cool, I think, because one complaint I've got about the comma is the tank is absolutely tiny. It's like 45 litres. And when you do like 20 odd mile per gallon, that's not much fuel at all. So going down underneath, it's spring over axle, um, which means the spring is mounted over the axle. Uh, things like the Land Rover is spring under axle. So you've got a big stack of leaf springs under the axle and you haven't got that much ground clearance. Uh, whereas this thing, spring over axle, a bit more ground clearance. And also things like the, uh, I can't remember what they call now, track rod is uh, is pretty chunky. Uh, I thought this was pretty cool, this towing point. It's got a little latch there so when you're towing it with uh, a tractor, for example, the tow rope doesn't fall off. Then at the back, again, spring over axle and a position for the spare, which is pretty cool. I did think initially, if you can see them drop link type things, I was thinking, oh wow, it's got an anti-roll bar, that's an unreal. Uh, no, it doesn't, it's got lever arm shocks, so they're just the connections for the lever arm shocks. Uh, another quirky thing, I've not seen this on other than like 1930s cars, uh, the way the diff bolts together. So to get the axle, sorry, bolts together. So to get that diff out there, you split the axle in half. Uh, it's also got drums all round, twin leading shoes on the front, single leading shoes on the back. And then the transmission looks very similar to the Land Rovers. A uh, drum on the back of the transmission for the handbrake. This one, there's no oil dripping out of it. Obviously, I don't want to rubbish the Land Rovers, but... Um, if they don't have oil coming out of them, then you probably run out of transmission oil. So like I say, this is a two and a half litre four cylinder. Not a lot of power, right? But this, somebody has added this and this is not right. That is the exhaust. It's barely bigger than my thumb. So I'm going to remake the exhaust, make it slightly bigger, like two and a quarter inch. And uh, that might free up a little bit of power. It's only from the silencer back that pipe is mega skinny. So somebody's clearly, something's been falling apart and somebody's welded that on. So all in all, I think it's a pretty pretty cool vehicle. Uh, I'm, I'm mega happy with it. Uh, it doesn't drive all that nicely. Um, you basically got to steer it straight. I've yet to even lift it up on the ramp and see what wheels are hanging off it. But uh, I know there'll be little bits of tweaking I can do to it and get it driving much nicer. Uh, but overall, I'm really pleased with it. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone and uh, see you next time.